Welcome to High Gluttony. I'm Gretchen. And I'm Becca. And we're two curious ladies who like to cook, smoke, learn, and enjoy a meal with friends. We invite you to join us every 10 days or so here at the High Gluttony Homestead and listen to us make a mess and have a lot of fun. (laughs) So step inside, Gluttoneers. Gluttoneers. <laughs> and hello, Gretchen. How are you? How's it going? I'm good. How are you today, Becca? I'm good. It's spring. We're having some nice weather. And I'm just excited to hang out with you today. And we're making something really exciting, obviously, as always. But I'm I'm excited about all of it, but I'm most excited about the baked goat cheese ball that we're going to (laughs) do. I mean, ball, disc, baked baked goat (laughs) cheese of any shape is pretty exciting. So yeah, I keep saying ball, but you're right. It's like a a disc, a disc, more of a disc. It's like you, (laughs) well, ball's fine. You can have a ball. You can bake a ball. (laughs) Maybe I'll bake a ball. But then we're also doing that raw asparagus salad, taking advantage again of those really nice spring veggies that we've got going on right now. Asparagus, asparagus, asparagus. <laughs> and I want to talk to you about the first time I saw asparagus like growing in the wild. But before <laughs> then, we are synchronistically both drinking the same brand of wine. Yes. And I've got a Stag's Leap Chardonnay. And I have a Stag's Leap Sauvignon Blanc, which is absolutely delightful has some really nice tropical notes in there, like mm. sort of unexpected, almost somewhat guava-y, but also grapefruity and fun. Maybe a, a tint of passion fruit. But it's fun to see the colors side by side. Mine's much more or, yellow. yellow. Yeah. And it's Gretchen's say orange. almost, yeah, Gretchen's is almost like watery kind of. <laughs> It's that pale yellowy green that is so characteristic of Sauvignon Blanc. Mm-hmm. Yum. So. so we thought these would go, we didn't plan this, but we both were like, wine, yes, wine. That sounds great. Oh, what are you drinking? Oh, we're drinking the same thing. Very similar. At least. So raw asparagus salad. Yum. Yum. Yay. We've been wanting to use asparagus so much. We keep trying to put it in all of our like future planned episodes and then having to remind ourselves that we're already doing asparagus so we can't yeah. keep making asparagus <laughs> I love asparagus that's part of the problem I just want to make all asparagus all the time I know but we're hoping this will be pretty quick and simple not quite a pantry power up but something that doesn't take a lot of work <laughs> although it we have done a couple of the steps and they did take some time so far which is why we're smoking <laughs> Probably I'm smoking more than I normally would, but what are you smoking right now? (laughs) Well, I'm about to try another new pot for myself here. So I've got (laughs) frosted cherry cookies, which is a hybrid, 22% THC. And unfortunately, I have no terpene information to share with you people. So we're just going to have to see what it's like. Okay, we'll see how it goes. Well, hopefully it's fine. We never know. (laughs) We never know. What, What are you smoking today, Becca? I'm trying to take it a little easy with some Northern Lights. This is a heavy hitters pin. And this one has 94.1% THC. That carrying again is popping up for me. So I got to figure out what that is. And then terpenoline and caryophylline. It's nice. I'm enjoying it. Feeling mellow. Oh, this is is good stuff. I like it. Mm -hmm. It's pretty neutral as far as flavor goes. So, Mm -hmm. Which is a good so, thing. Tell, tell me about the first time you saw asparagus growing. All right. So probably not a surprise to you, but I did not realize that asparagus just literally pops up out of the ground the same way it looks in my house from the grocery store. Like it just shoots up in these little stalks and looks totally the same. And I felt weird. And I also felt like interested when I saw it. I was like, I feel kind of uncomfortable about this, but I don't know why. But it was at the place we used to work at together. (laughs) Well, I can tell, I think I can tell you why it's because it looks fake when you see it for the first time. You're like, somebody just stuck a bunch of asparagus and some dirt. Like, yeah, this is not growing here. Like, it's just, yeah. 
somebody stuck this here so that's part yeah, of reverse it. It reverse screw someone put yeah. it in after yeah it, yeah that's exactly it it's very surreal to be like what you look exactly the same I'm right out of the ground <laughs> just one <laughs> little bit yeah <laughs> but you've yeah. grown it have you grown it oh yes successfully well, not so much but <laughs> <laughs> this year we were spend a little more time looking into it. I asked my mom to do a little research because we've had asparagus crown, like asparagus plants for several years now. And I can never get it to put up more than like a couple of like two or three pieces maybe per plant. Found out that they're probably too crowded. They were all planted in pots. And so pots are not its ideal situation because it likes a bit more space. I dug up a couple of pots and moved them out into my raised bed this year just to see if I could get it to grow and apparently you're supposed to dig a hole into the dirt quite far down put your what they call crowns it's like a root system and like a little knob at the top and you cover it with dirt and then you wait until it starts to grow a little bit and then you like fill it in with a little more dirt so like you've got this ditch that you're just kind of slowly raising the level of the dirt as the Hmm. asparagus grows so hopefully I can report better results next year (laughs) So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> I'm settling in 2023 asparagus outcome. Yes. <laughs> Next year, we will have saffron flowers, hopefully, and <gasps> asparagus. Whew, that much Exciting. closer to some of our staple crops from the high gluttony homestead. That's right. One crop at a time. How do you transplant asparagus? So they, they look kind of like almost octopus-like because they have these long, thick roots and then a knob at the top like I just dug the crown up as they call it that part and then moved it dug a big hole out front and now I've got like these divots in my garden where I've like the top of the crown is in the divot and there's roots below that so you just have to make sure to get like that whole system yeah okay we will see this yields better results and we're going to use it fresh today we're just saving it we've actually already done that yeah. yeah. Well, I still have a few more spears to go because I'm making salad for a couple more people than you. But <laughs> I started on it and we did have to, to finesse the t- our technique a little bit just because we the recipes, a lot of the recipes we were looking at recommended a peeler. I was having a hard time getting it to look okay, even with a peeler. So I just tried my mandolin and I like the results on that better just because I can get a little bit thicker ribbon and a little bit more consistent. Be- Becca described hers as rustic because <laughs> it's she went mess. it's all over the place <laughs> she went full on with the peeler so yep mm-hmm. lots of different sizes some very thin weird pieces and some chunks to bite into so we'll see how it goes but it's gonna be all mellowed out by this beautiful baked goat cheese that we're making I'm so excited and we get to use Parmesan again. So that's going oh. in there and some lemon and olive oil to dress. So we're making this real simple, up to your interpretation kind of cooking today. We did want to talk a little bit about goat cheese before we kick off our cooking. Mm-hmm. So I'll share a little background. And then if you could talk to me about process and stuff, that would be so perfect. Sounds good. Goats were one of the first animals kept by humans. This source I found said over 9,000 years ago, they were one of the first before any other livestock had been tamed. And so mostly in Iran, this said that the villagers formed an informal deal with the wild goats. They would herd, feed, and protect them in exchange for meat, milk, hides, etc. And the relationship became so codependent that eventually goats were sort of incorporated into some religious deities and rituals and became like a form of currency because they became so valued. And so often you'd see like a dowry paid with goats and the more goats, the more prosperous the family. Well, I mean... There are worse forms of currency. So it's true. I would take a goat. Yeah. I would take a goat. I would yeah. definitely take a goat. <laughs> so long referred to as the poor man's cow, 
because they're foragers and not grazers. Goats live on rough land and can sort of kind of be anywhere. And cows are a little bit more precious about this. So they're a little bit sturdier in that way. Also because of this though, goat cheese was kind of considered like a peasant dish. Well, because it's, it's, so easy to make there's no skill to it really so I think that might be part of it is that any boob with some uh, goat milk can make goat cheese so (laughs) phew I mean good thing we're not doing it today but also there's hope yeah there's hope yeah (laughs) there were lots of fresh goat cheese recipes online so yeah you can have that maybe we could do a fresh cheese episode make ricotta and make goat cheese or something yeah doable and wouldn't be Fun. hard. Pantry power up. <laughs> Pantry power up cheese. Cheese edition. Cheese edition. So then eventually around the 8th century, the Loire, is that how you say it? Loire Valley of France, um, started making goat cheese. And this is where that chev or chevre that we see today came from. And farmers would use goat's milk to make cheese. And then, of course, word spread about its popularity. Anything in France is kind of like, ooh, it's so fancy. Everyone has to have it. It produced from mass production to small, like, artisanal farms. And you can kind of find it everywhere now. Good thing. Right? I do love some goat (laughs) cheese. It's super versatile. (laughs) And yes, in comparison to cows that take up a lot more space and they need pretty much flat ground for the most part and lots of food to in order to produce milk because you're talking about mom cows that have had calves and are producing milk whereas goats are just like I can eat this Christmas tree and I'll produce a bunch of milk right foragers not foragers foragers. so what happens after that now we know France made it popular it's easy to make goats are a good thing to have around how do you how do you get to the cheese part? Goats are not precious. In other words, they're not the pistachios. <laughs> they uh, well, they do think that the sort of the origin of the cheese making was just people leaving the the milk out and letting it ferment and then coagulate. Seems like the most likely course of action is that, like most Love things, it. it was kind of by accident. Somebody <laughs> let something sit too long, and they're like, "Well, this is actually kind of good." <laughs> Yay! A delicious surprise. A very delicious surprise. But it easily coagulates just by adding acid to it, and the result is really tasty. I don't think I've seen as many cheeses, like goat milk cheeses, that are brought to coagulate by rennet, unlike last time when we were talking about Parmesan. Parmesan. But since we're talking about a pretty broad, basically, genre of cheese here, you have a lot of different styles. So you could even make goat cheese in a Parmesan-esque style and have a hard cheese from goat's goat's milk. Today, the cheese we're dealing with is a fresh cheese. So pretty much just whatever they use to coagulate it. And then it's more of a process than an ingredients-based thing. So it's not aged, really? It's just kind of like processed, packaged, and sent out? Yeah. Okay. Sort of akin to ricotta cheese or things like that. Okay. Firmer. It's all about how much water you take out of it. (laughs) Okay. That makes sense because of you're saying you could make a Parmesan version of a goat's milk and that's just taking a lot of that liquid out kind Mm -hmm. of. Yeah. Okay. But I, I mean, I have a little bit of a lactose problem and I've always heard that goat cheese is better than it is cow. It is. Because it doesn't have as much, I'm going to say, it doesn't have as much lactic acid, but the, it has to do with this, these caseins that exist in the milk, which I couldn't quite understand what those were, <laughs> but it's a component in the milk. So the, the goat's casein is much easier for people to digest than what's in cow's milk. So they have okay. like either a different casein or multiple casein, you know, uh, that make it challenging. So, okay. And you said it just kind of needs an acid to coagulate. Could you use lemon? Yes, you could use lemon. Okay. Awesome. And any kind of any acid, like would you use a vinegar, anything? 
Anything. Okay. Real easy. No problems with this. Is there anything else? I mean, the flavor is different than cow cheese, but is there anything else you would say that distinguishes it? So that, that like tangy component that is in goat cheese comes from their medium chain fatty asses, 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 <laughs> medium chain fatty asses, asses. <laughs> with a D acids. <laughs> Medium. <laughs> yes. And then I could not not say that five more times. Right. Okay. <laughs> These are it, it's fatty, a, ass. fat, fatty acids. Fatty acids. Fatty acids. Those fatty acids are called caprock and caprolic yeah flows off the tongue but <laughs> derivative of the root word for goat okay that makes sense mm-hmm. what else should i know about goat cheese but yes there's more to it but only if you're making a more complicated cheese so if you're doing something with more aging or some special mold to it so that you get some sort of like camembert-esque like thing but today we're talking about fresh cheese and fresh cheese is simple we're keeping it simple I'm gonna say boobs have been doing it for thousands of years but that sounds wrong <laughs> the boobs and the asses have been getting it right for a year. I guess I will just end with the it's not really any healthier for you than cow's milk other than if you're slash toast intolerant then as far as your digestive system reacting to it in a nice way that would be your health benefit. <laughs> so we have our baked goat cheese recipe coming from Pinch and Swirl, although they were doing a different kind of salad. We're just stealing their baked goat cheese <laughs> disc thingy. We're going to coat our cheese in a panko breadcrumb crust and then rest that in the fridge for a little while just to make sure it's fully set up. And while that's resting, we're going to well, I'm going to finish shaving my asparagus and then we are going to dress our salad and that'll be really ready to roll. And we're just going to dress it real simple with some olive oil and lemon juice and a little bit of onion and salt and pepper. Did we have an official recipe for the asparagus or we're just going with it? No, because every recipe I looked at was pretty much the same. So it was, it was asparagus with olive oil, lemon juice, Parmesan, salt, pepper. <laughs> so they were all <laughs> the same. I was like, we don't, we don't really need a recipe for this. We're we gonna got do, this. We're going to do this to taste. Yeah. What special ingredients will we need though? Well, the asparagus, special ingredients <laughs> or special equipment. I'm sorry, special equipment. We're going to use a sill pan and a sheet pan again to bake our crisp, our goat cheese on. We need a vegetable peeler or a mandolin for slicing the asparagus and then just a bowl to toss the salad in and easy peasy lemon squeezy. Okay. We're going to try and do this in less than 40 minutes. So we got this. We got this. We can do it. We can do it. Okay. All right. Let's let's, do it. Move it into the kitchen. Move it. Let's go. Go, go, go. (laughs) And our ovens are preheated to 450. We are ready to roll. I'm going to get my goat cheese out of the fridge. Me too. Woo-hoo! I've already got my little dish of olive oil here and a little dish of my panko breadcrumbs. And we've already cut our goat cheese into discs. So that's all ready to roll. I'm going to add some salt to my panko breadcrumbs because I feel like we need to do that. Okay. That's probably enough. Tell so me exactly what we're doing here. So we are going to take a slice of goat cheese and dip it in this olive oil and then dip it into the breadcrumbs and then set it on both sides. So we have to make sure it's coated. Okay. It's going to dip and dip in the olive oil and shake off a little bit of excess that you got there and then dip and dip. And then it doesn't need to be like super thickly coated. We're just, it should hold together fairly well. Just a layer though. Yeah. Okay. 
or I may be not doing this right at all. It's been too many years since I've done a goat baked goat cheese salad. <laughs> I haven't had to do one since I worked in the restaurant industry. So, <laughs> well, it's going to be delicious. It doesn't matter. One of the articles I looked at about goat cheese was like, and thanks to Northern California chefs in the 1980s, there's goat cheese and beet salads everywhere. <laughs> so true. <laughs> yeah, That is a good pairing, though. <laughs> it's a classic. I mean, you can't really <laughs> argue with it. <laughs> so these will cook for how long? 10 minutes. And then once they go in, we'll dress our, spa- our shaved asparagus, or I guess you'll finish shaving it, and then we'll dress it. Precisely. Perfect. Precisely perfect. Pantry power up ish. I'd have to put more olive oil in my little thing. It's using more than I anticipated. I'm also running sort of low on panko. Uh Just make it. How many slices did you end up with? Four, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm saying. Oh oh my gosh. We are so in sync today. Oh my God. Wow. It is wonderful. And neither one of us deals with it well when it is not going well. No, everything is off for us. It's a mess. (laughs) One of these looks pretty rough. (laughs) I know. I just kind of messed one up too. So I was like, maybe nine. (laughs) I'll have nine. Yeah. If I was really, really careful with opening, when I opened my package and was slicing, Mm -hmm. I could have gotten 12. Sure. All right. Yeah. I'm going for rustic all around. So. Yeah, rustic, 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 rustic. <laughs> I only have two more after this one I'm working on, and then I'm ready to go. Figure I'm just might as well put a little bit extra on some of the tops of these. Okay. There's not much left, so I'm just like, yeah, use it up. Yeah, it's already poured out. Yeah. You know what I like about today? Not a lot of dishes. Yeah, light dish day. Very excited about that. <laughs> the best day. So I'm putting my goat cheese cookies away because my brain really <laughs> wanted to say that okay, go. Cheese cookies. back in the fridge yeah they're going back in the fridge couldn't find pl- a place to put them so they're on this huge plate that's sitting sideways in my they're well not totally sideways but si- sort of sideways in my <laughs> cheese drawer so we'll see how well that works <laughs> I gotta find space and I am back to shaving asparagus 30 minutes left 30 minutes left, contestants, 30 minutes left. But as far as pe- doing the asparagus with the peeler, how, how easy or hard did you feel like that was? Mm, it was not hard. It was just okay. a little time consuming. Oh, I actually like how that looks though. Yeah, there were a couple of big chunks that I just kind of ended up kind of slicing a little bit, but then I did leave a few bigger ones just to kind of tell, tell it was an asparagus still. Right. <laughs> you have numerous textures in your salad, so. Yeah. Because I'm definitely getting a few like more thinly sliced strips versus some of the other ones that are a little bit thicker. So you'll have a variety too. Mm-hmm. Fun. Oh, those are pretty. I can see yours. They look pretty nice. Mm-hmm. I did toss my uh, onion that I chopped up before. In. Okay. And, and I I'm meant shallot. Yeah. And I meant to do shallot, but I didn't think the shallots at Trader Joe's were big enough. Went next door to Whole Foods and forgot to buy them. Classic shallot story. Classic shallot story. The shallot story that is old as time. (laughs) A shallot as old as time. And then olive oil, lemon, salt, pepper. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love it. Parmesan. 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 Can't forget the Parmesan. Do not forget the Parmesan. Parmesan goes on now? Yes. Thank you. I'm going to, yeah. Toss some in there. I'm wondering if I should stop or keep going. I'm almost done with the amount of asparagus I bought. You're so close. I also feel like I've got a lot of salad. I have to balance of, that. We've been making a lot of green things lately. Yeah, that's good though. It is good. Bring my weight down after my candy extravaganza over Christmas <laughs> time. Okay, so I'm just going to squeeze a lemon in here. A very squishy lemon. <laughs> I started with half. These mine are pretty big. Your lemons? Mm-hmm. That seems seems like a reasonable place to start. I think I need more. More lemon juice. More lemon juice. Yep. So I've been working on a new batch of preserved lemons. And now I oh, wish yeah? I had had some that were ready. <gasps> mm-hmm. That'd be good in this. And then toss some more. So that just sits until the goat baked baked goat cheese is done. Yep. 
because it since it's a little bit more of a fibrous type veg it likes a little time to sit with that acid and um olive oil so that it can absorb it a little bit softens it a bit yeah so i think we could go ahead and bake our goat cheese things that's where we're at okay we have 20 more minutes we better get it get it get to it ah Oh my gosh. <clears throat> I forgot we put them in the fridge and I was like, I already put mine in the oven, but then I checked the oven and they weren't there and I got really freaked out, but they were in the fridge. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Well, this weed is working. <laughs> Seems like it. Yeah. Uh-huh. And the cold pan's okay to go in the oven? Yeah. Cold pan's fine. Okay. You just don't want to do, usually it's more like you don't want to do super hot to super cold. Oh, okay. Especially if, it, but if it's a ceramic dish, I'd be more concerned, but a metal pan's not going to suffer. Okay. Oh, uh, I'm putting mine in. Now we just relax. Sip our right? stag sleep. Got 10 minutes on, on the clock. I'm going to sit then. Might sit in front of the oven. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Now I'm just going to call it the Gretchen squat. Now it's the Gretchen squat. Well, I'm going to just sit now, fully sit in front of the oven. (laughs) The Gretchen sit. Have a watch. See how this goat cheese thing goes. This is not as exciting to watch as the Parmesan crisp, let me tell you. (laughs) Did we say world level one? I think this is world. I was thinking it was world level two, but this might be the only time I'm like, I don't know. This is kind of a world level one. I guess it would be two. It's a two if you're doing the mandolin because that's mm-hmm. its own problem. Mm-hmm. It did take some time to peel. Not like I think we've said before, we're going to do like an annoyance rating level. Yeah. And like it's certainly not high, but I'd say a two annoyance. It's not it's, peeling pistachios, but, but it's also not like ripping herbs off the stem. Right. So, no. It took well, longer than I anticipated. Yeah. Me too. Uh-huh. I was thinking, oh, this would be easy. And then I was like, why is this hard? But <laughs> I do think the thicker the asparagus is that you can get, the better. But I was going to give you an update on the cheese. Yes. We're seeing some gold and a little bit of dark brown on one of them actually already. Just around Ooh. the edges. Overachiever. Mm-hmm. I'm only baking four right now. See a oh. little bu- bubbling around the edges here. This is taking forever, it feels like. <laughs> <laughs> gonna say, yes, it's much slower than the Parmesan crisps we did last time. And those were at a lower temperature. Well, this one, you what you're trying to do is cook quickly on the outside so that your cheese stays intact on the inside. Okay, doesn't get too loose. Yeah, but most of the time, 10 minutes for us is like a blink. And now we're, we're not doing anything. We finished our other part. It's all like just waiting now. This is so weird for us. I guess I should just enjoy it. I don't know yeah. what that yeah. means. <laughs> we should have waited to talk <laughs> till now to talk about goat cheese, I guess. Oh, yeah. But this also looks like it's going to be done much more quickly than 10 minutes, I think. Okay. Fantastic. <laughs> Hello, Aria. She's like, why are you on the floor? <laughs> Aria is one of the bunnies. Mm-hmm. Like, I guess we could announce there's a new bunny. <gasps> At least tentatively a new bunny. tentatively new bunny i think i might have to take take these out mine look okay done. you're going i'm gonna go for it I how also, long has it been uh, like maybe seven minutes i think hmm. i don't know i'm confused because the clock above my stove which is i think the one i originally looked at now says 347 so i think that's seven minutes okay. my my clocks are both off even though i thought i set them for the same time i don't know <laughs> those look good Okay, Gretchen's done. I'll go check mine. And then I'm going to turn off the oven because I think I'm done with the oven. Oh, mine kind of flattened a little. All right. Well, we probably needed a little more. I, I thought we could get away with not so much uh, time in the fridge. Oh, you think we should have kept them cold longer? Maybe we needed to chill them a little bit longer. Mine did sure. okay, though. Okay. It did melt out. Like the some of the stuff melted ac- away from the edges. Mm-hmm. But it's not too bad. I think mine maybe need to go a little longer. Okay. Maybe not too no. much longer. All right. I'm just going to leave them then. We'll just have really I think they're probably going to be warm and a little crispy. Like, mm-hmm. and that's kind of the nice thing. And I think partly why they, they're doing a coating with olive oil, not uh, egg. Is that so it, it just crisps a little on the outside. And so it's really more about like having warm cheese than <laughs> a than crispy a outside. Shape. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
Okay. Well, I think it's going to be delicious with the salad that's been sitting for a little bit. I'm uh, ready to try it, but I know we should let it cool for at least a couple minutes. Before mm. we, we could take it. a little edge piece. <laughs> it's true. I could just take a little piece off the, the side. Okay, I've got some asparagus. Make myself a little portion. I make sure I taste this again. I might still do a little more lemon on the asparagus. Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. Very right. delicious. So did you already you do the goat cheese too? I did it together, yeah. Oh my goodness. Melty cheese. Oh my gosh. <laughs> there we go. Mm. Oh my God, that's amazing. <laughs> it's really good. I love it. Mm-hmm. It's kind of perfect. Yum. Yay. <laughs> Listen to that chew, everyone. Uh-huh. Crunch, 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 crunch. Mm. Mm. I like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Me too. Go I like it a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There you go. There you go. We did it under in 30 30- minutes. We did it in 30 minutes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. We're amazing. Is that the first time ever? <laughs> Probably. But it Probably. wasn't something like a pantry power up. Yes. They're so good. A complete dish in 30 minutes or less. You could have some improvement on the, the goat cheese things if you let them sit in the fridge a little bit longer, but pretty fucking good right now. Yeah. Just, just tastes little- like goat cheese. Tastes like goat cheese, like kind of nice if you kind of mush it in with a little bit of the asparagus too. And then you just get like a little bit of that crunch and the kinko with the creaminess mm-hmm. of the goat cheese and then the bite from the asparagus. Yeah. Oh, cool. mm-hmm. nice job. And the lemon. High five. It's really nice. High five. Oh my gosh. We'll post the recipes. Thoughts? At least ingredients. At least on ingredients. The website. Yeah. <laughs> There'll be a list. I, yeah. And so that's at highgluttony.com and you can find us on Instagram and Facebook and thanks for joining us, everyone. Now get the fuck out of here. (laughs) Off we go. Off we go.